Epictetus is my personal favorite Stoic philosopher, and he'll be the first on our list of quoted Stoics. His no-nonsense style combined with practical and simple wisdom makes him, to me, the greatest Stoic teacher of the time. Epictetus was born into slavery around 55 AD. The name Epictetus translates to acquired. So, while his parents likely gave him his own name, it's been lost to history. His early life was one of service. However, with the permission of his master, he was allowed to study Stoicism under Gaius Musonius Rufus, who we'll cover later on. This study started Epictetus on the path of the philosopher, and with the fall of Emperor Nero, Epictetus secured his freedom. This allowed him to teach his own brand of Stoicism. His lectures were transcribed by his student Arian into the Discourses and the Enchiridion. These two books now form some of the best surviving Stoic teachings from the ancient world and are my personal favorites. Below is a collection of hand-picked quotes from Epictetus. It seems like you've shared a message that emphasizes the importance of not skipping a particular video and encourages the viewer to consider themselves as an exception, treating themselves differently and investing time and attention in things that matter. While I can't actually watch or skip videos, I'm here to help with any questions or discussions you might have related to the message or any other topic. How can I assist you further? It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. Only the educated are free. Some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and, in one word, whatever are not our actions. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempests. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Seek not the good in external things, seek it in yourselves. People are not disturbed by things, but by the views they take of them. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you, but answer, he was ignorant of my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these alone. Any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Don't explain your philosophy. Embody it. To accuse others for one's own misfortune is a sign of want of education. To accuse oneself shows that one's education has begun. To accuse neither oneself nor others shows that one's education is complete. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. If you would be a reader, read. If a writer, write. God has entrusted me with myself. No man is free who is not master of himself. A man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. The world turns aside to let any man pass who knows where he is going. Remember, it is not enough to be hit or insulted to be harmed. You must believe that you are being harmed. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation which is why it is essential that we not respond impulsively to impressions. Take a moment before reacting, and you will find it easier to maintain control. A ship should not ride on a single anchor, nor life on a single hope. Demand not that things happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do, and you will go on well. Remember that you ought to behave in life as you would at a banquet. As something is being passed around, it comes to you. Stretch out your hand, Take a portion of it politely. It passes on. Do not detain it. Or it has not come to you yet. Do not project your desire to meet it, but wait until it comes in front of you. So act toward children, so toward a wife, so toward office, so toward wealth. Events do not just happen, but arrive by appointment. Either God wants to abolish evil, 
and cannot. Or he can, but does not want to. It is unrealistic to expect people to see you as you see yourself. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Do not act as if you were going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you. While you live, while it is in your power, be good. Dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. Think constantly on the changes of the elements into each other, for such thoughts wash away the dust of earthly life. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. If any man despises me, that is his problem. My only concern is not doing or saying anything deserving of contempt. The first rule is to keep an untroubled spirit. The second is to look things in the face and know them for what they are. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinion of himself than on the opinion of others. Begin each day by telling yourself, Today I shall be meeting with interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will and selfishness, all of them due to the offender's ignorance of what is good or evil. Perfection of character is this, to live each day as if it were your last, without frenzy, without apathy, without pretense. A person's worth is measured by the worth of what he values. Observe always that everything is the result of change, and get used to thinking that there is nothing nature loves so well as to change existing forms and make new ones like them. Or is it your reputation that's bothering you? But look at how soon we're all forgotten. The abyss of endless time that swallows it all. The emptiness of those applauding hands. The people who praise us. How capricious they are. How arbitrary. And the tiny region it takes place. The whole earth a point in space. And most of it uninhabited. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break. But it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. A man must stand erect, not be kept erect by others. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place but to be a different person. Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. Fire tests gold, suffering tests brave men. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. They lose the day in expectation of the night, and the night in fear of the dawn. It is not that we have so little time, but that we lose so much. The life we receive is not short, but we make it so. We are not ill provided, but use what we have wastefully. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. You are arranging what lies in fortune's control and abandoning what lies in yours. What are you looking at? To what goal are you straining? The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. If a man knows not to which port he sails, no wind is favorable. Anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he is not. All cruelty springs from weakness. Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. Withdraw into yourself as far as you can. Associate with those who will make a better man of you. Welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. He who spares the wicked injures the good. You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. He suffers more than necessary who suffers before it is necessary. A gift consists not in what is done or given, but in the intention of the giver or doer. People are frugal in guarding their personal property. But as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. 
Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. To win true freedom, you must be a slave to philosophy. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Often a very old man has no other proof of his long life than his age. No man is crushed by misfortune unless he has first been deceived by prosperity. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. Well-being is realized by small steps but is truly no small thing. Nothing is more hostile to a firm grasp on knowledge than self-deception. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. We have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. If you lay violent hands on me, you'll have my body, but my mind will remain with stilpo. Happiness is a good flow of life. A bad feeling is a commotion of the mind, repugnant to reason, and against nature. No loss should be more regrettable to us than losing our time, for it's irretrievable. Wealth is able to buy the pleasures of eating, drinking, and other sensual pursuits, yet can never afford a cheerful spirit or freedom from sorrow. In our control is the most beautiful and important thing, the thing because of which even the God himself is happy, namely, the proper use of our impressions. We must concern ourselves absolutely with the things that are under our control and entrust the things not in our control to the universe. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Choose to die well while you can. Wait too long, and it might become impossible to do so. If we were to measure what is good by how much pleasure it brings, nothing would be better than self-control. If we were to measure what is to be avoided by its pain, nothing would be more painful than lack of self-control. From good people you'll learn good, but if you mingle with the bad you'll destroy such soul as you had. You will earn the respect of all if you begin by earning the respect of yourself. Don't expect to encourage good deeds in people conscious of your own misdeeds. Since every man dies, it is better to die with distinction than to live long. To accept injury without a spirit of savage resentment, to show ourselves merciful toward those who wrong us, being a source of good hope to them, is characteristic of a benevolent and civilized way of life. We will train both soul and body when we accustom ourselves to cold, heat, thirst, hunger, scarcity of food, hardness of bed, abstaining from pleasures and enduring pains. What good are gilded rooms or precious stones fitted on the floor, inlaid in the walls, carried from great distances at the greatest expense? These things are pointless and unnecessary, Without them, isn't it possible to live healthy? Aren't they the source of constant trouble? Don't they cost vast sums of money that, through public and private charity, may have benefited many? Being good is the same as being a philosopher. If you obey your father, you will follow the will of a man. If you choose the philosopher's life, the will of the universe. It is plain, therefore, that your duty lies in the pursuit of philosophy. For mankind, Evil is injustice and cruelty and indifference to a neighbor's trouble, while virtue is brotherly love and goodness and justice and beneficence and concern for the welfare of your neighbor, with. Husband and wife should come together to craft a shared life, procreating children, seeing all things as shared between them with nothing withheld or private to one another, not even their bodies. Written by the Roman emperor during his campaigns, this personal diary remains one of the most profound works of Stoic philosophy that exists today. It offers insights into the unique brand of Stoic philosophy practiced by Aurelius. It emphasizes the changing nature of life, the importance of virtuous living, and the pursuit of good over pleasure and virtue over vice. Marcus Aurelius concentrate every minute on doing what's in front of you. You don't have to turn this into something. It doesn't have to upset you. The present is all we have to live in, or to lose. Stop whatever you're doing for a moment and ask yourself, Am I afraid of death? Because I won't be able to do this anymore. Let each thing you would do, say or intend, he like that of a dying person. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. Today I escaped anxiety or no, I discarded it because it was within me in my own perceptions, not outside. 
You have to assemble your life yourself, action by action. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. You can also commit injustice by doing nothing. Receive without pride, let go without attachment. If it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. Have I done something for the common good? Then I share in the benefits. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. It's unfortunate that this has happened. No, it's fortunate that this has happened and I've remained unharmed. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say. You always own the option of having no opinion. Ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? If something is humanly possible, it's attainable by you to think of yourself as death. You have lived your life. Now take what's left and live it properly. Someone despises me. That's their problem. Everything is born from change. You have power over your mind, not outside events. When Jared unavoidably by circumstance, revert that once to yourself. And don't lose the rhythm more than you can help. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do. Say and think out our life is what our thoughts make it. If you don't have a consistent goal in life, you can't live it in a consistent way. Get back up when you fail. Celebrate behaving like a human. Limit yourself to the present, the tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say or think or do only what you do. Don't you see how much you have to offer? And yet, do you still settle for less mastery of reading and writing requires a master? The struggle is great. The task divine to gain mastery, freedom, happiness, and tranquility. Do not let others hold you back. A blazing fire makes flame and brightness out of everything that is thrown into it. To love only what happens, no greater harmony. If it's humanly possible, you can do it to choose not to be harmed. And you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed. And you haven't been, don't procrastinate. Don't confuse. Don't wander. Don't be passive or aggressive. Don't be all about business. Love the hands that fade deals and play it as your own. Practice even what seems impossible. There is never any need to get worked up about things you can't control. People exist for one another. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strike. Seneca, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Being poor is not having too little. It is wanting more. If a man knows not to which forty sails, no wind is favorable. It's better to conquer grief than to deceive it. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. No man is more unhappy than he who never faces adversity, for he is not permitted to prove himself. Everything hangs on one's thinking. A man is as unhappy as he has convinced himself he is. It's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. All cruelty springs from weakness. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. He who is everywhere is nowhere. As long as you live, keep learning how to live. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. Sometimes even to live is an act of courage. You can tell the character of every man when you see how he gives and receives praise. It is not that we have a short space of time, but that we waste much of it. The greatest remedy for anger is delay. How much progress shall I make you as just as much as you try to make wisdom comes haphazard to know me. This is our big mistake to think we look forward to death. Most of death is already gone. Whatever time has passed is owned by death. If what you have seems insufficient to you, then though you possess the world, you will yet be miserable. Most powerful is he who has himself in his own power. It does not matter what you bear, but how you bear nothing delights the mind as much as loving in loyal friendship. Whatever can happen at any time can happen today. Excellence withers without an adversary. Joy comes to us from those whom we love, even when they are absent. What progress have I made? I have begun to be a friend to myself. If my wealth goes away, it takes with it nothing but itself. Epic teachers, if you wish to improve, be content to appear clueless or stupid. Don't just say that you have read books show that through them. You have learned to think better. 
I cannot escape death, but at least I can escape the fear of it. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. You become what you give your attention to. It's impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. If you are ever tempted to look for outside approval, realize that you have compromised your integrity. If you need a witness, be your own. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? If your choices are beautiful, so too will you be. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. It's not things that upset us, but our judgments about the circumstances don't make the man they only reveal him to himself. Welcome events in whichever way they happen. This is the path to peace. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. The essence of philosophy is that a man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. No man is free who has not master of himself. The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. You are hurt the moment you believe yourself to be. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Seek not the good and external things. Seek it in yourselves. Curb your desire. Don't set your heart on so many things and you will get what you need. Devote the rest of your life to making progress. Better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. If you lay filing hands on me, you'll have my body, but my mind will remain with still. Happiness is a good flow of life. A bad feeling is a commotion of the mind repugnant to reason and against nature. Well-being is realized by small steps, but it's truly no small thing. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. We have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. He is best of all men who follows good advice. Good, too, is he who finds out all things for himself. No loss should be more regrettable to us than losing our time for its irretrievable. Follow where reason leads. Steal your sensibilities so that live shall hurt you as little as possible. No evil is honorable, but death is honorable. Therefore, death is not evil. All the good are friends of one another. No one entrusts a secret to a drunken man, but one will entrust a secret to a good man. Therefore, the good man will not get drunk. All things are parts of one single system, which is called nature. The individual life is good when it is in harmony with nature. Seeing that the universe gives birth to beings that are animate, and why should it not be considered animate? And why is that so? The end may be defined as life in accordance with nature, or, in other words, in accordance with our own human nature, as well as that of the universe. When a dog is tied to a cart, if it wants to follow, it is pulled and follows, making its spontaneous act coincide with necessity. But if the dog does not follow, it will be compelled in any case. So it is with men to, even if they don't want to, they will be compelled to follow what is destiny. Fate is the endless chain of connection whereby things are the reason or principle by which the world goes on. Man seems to be deficient in nothing, so much as he is in PT. I hope you liked this video. I hope to subscribe. But what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily Stoic email. One bit of Stoic wisdom totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com, email, there's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I sent it every day for the last six years and hope to see you there at dailystoic.com, email. Focus on personal responsibility. The Stoics advocate for focusing on our own actions and attitudes, acknowledging that while we can't control external events, we can control our responses to them. This can be very freeing. Resilience. The Stoics teach resilience, encouraging us to face hardship and adversity with a calm and composed mindset, using logic and reason as much as possible. Living according to nature. Stoicism suggests that living in harmony with nature and understanding, our place in the larger cosmos, helps us find a happier way of life. Importance of Virtue Virtue in Stoic philosophy is the highest good and is synonymous with wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Through virtue, 
Our behaviors help us build contentment and inner peace. Having been born into slavery in Hierapolis, present-day Turkey, he gained his freedom and even became an influential teacher in Rome before being banished. It seems that every emperor loved a good banishment back in the day. Epictetus's philosophy, as recorded by his pupil Arian, can be found in the Discourses and the Enchiridion, or Manual. Epictetus's teachings emphasize the Stoic belief that the path to happiness is found in accepting the moment, as it presents itself, and not being controlled by our desire for pleasure or our fear of pain. He taught that we can achieve a state of tranquility and freedom by focusing on what is within our control, our beliefs, opinions, and attitudes, and letting go of what is beyond our control, such as external events and the actions of others. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you, but answer, he was ignorant of my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these alone. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. Men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take of things. Thus death is nothing terrible, else it would have appeared so to Socrates. But the terror consists in our notion of death, that it is terrible. When therefore we are hindered, or disturbed, or grieved, let us never impute it to others, but to ourselves, that is, to our own views. It is the action of an uninstructed person to reproach others for his own misfortunes of one entering upon instruction to reproach himself, and of one perfectly instructed to reproach neither others or himself. First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. Circumstances don't make the man, they only reveal him to himself. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Don't seek to have events happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do happen, and all will be well with you. God has entrusted me with myself. No man is free who is not master of himself. A man should so live that his happiness shall depend as little as possible on external things. Know you not that a good man does nothing for appearance sake, but for the sake of having done right? If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. You always own the option of having no opinion. There is never any need to get worked up, or to trouble your soul about things you can't control. These things are not asking to be judged by you. Leave them alone. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Waste no more time arguing about except the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. What a good man should be. Be one. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. The soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. You live as if you were destined to live forever. No thought of your frailty ever enters your head of how much time has already gone by you take no heed. You squander time as if you drew from a full and abundant supply, though all the while that day which you bestow on some person or thing is perhaps your last. Until we have begun to go without them, we fail to realize how unnecessary many things are. We've been using them not because we needed them, but because we had them. Stoic philosophy offers its students a clear and practical path out of suffering. Whether we're having trouble with work, our social lives, accepting the state of the world around us, or having difficulty knowing how to act, Stoic philosophy gives us a compass of almost all situations we could want for. One of its most impactful practices is the wisdom to take responsibility for what we can control and accept what we cannot. This principle encourages us to focus our energy and attention on our own actions and attitudes, rather than worrying about external events beyond our control. 
Another core principle of Stoicism is the need to develop virtue, which is seen as the highest form of good and the only thing needed for true and lasting happiness. Virtue in this context means qualities like wisdom, courage, justice, and self-discipline. Stoicism teaches us that by striving to embody these virtues in our daily lives, we can lead more fulfilling and meaningful lives. This focus on personal ethics and integrity offers a solid foundation for making decisions and navigating ethical dilemmas. Generally speaking, the Stoics have left us with a pretty robust framework for personal development, offering practical strategies for living a balanced and virtuous life. Its teachings on resilience, virtue, harmony with nature, and tranquility are as relevant today as they were in ancient times, offering valuable guidance for anyone seeking to navigate the ups and downs of modern life with grace and wisdom. Some things are in our control and others not. Things in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our own actions. Things not in our control are body, property, reputation, command, and, in one word, whatever are not our own actions. Many people feel a great deal of emotional distress when the world around them doesn't go their way. This could be failing to get a job, a crash in the stock market, rain on their wedding day, or even traffic on the way home from work. However, when we learn to accept the things in life we can't control, we lessen the impact these things have on our well-being, and we become happier and more resilient in the process. The dichotomy of control turns resistance into acceptance. The things in our control are by nature free, unrestrained, unhindered, but those not in our control are weak, slavish, restrained, belonging to others. Remember then, that if you suppose that things which are slavish by nature are also free, and that what belongs to others is your own, then you will be hindered. You will lament, you will be disturbed, and you will find fault both with gods and men. But if you suppose that only to be your own which is your own, and what belongs to others such as it really is, then no one will ever compel you or restrain you. Further, you will find fault with no one, or accuse no one. You will do nothing against your will. No one will hurt you, you will have no enemies, and you not be harmed. Here Epictetus explains that when we take responsibility for what is our own, and accept the things that are not our own, we rid ourselves of the negative emotions caused by getting this distinction wrong. When we become aware of this distinction, it becomes our decision whether or not to take responsibility for that which is our own. Using this logic, we can say that AI is indifferent, a hammer is not evil if we use it to hit someone. The hammer is just a tool, it is indifferent. Similarly, AI isn't evil if someone uses it to create fake images of another person or make money by posting hundreds of factually incorrect articles. It's simply a tool. It is indifferent. The goodness and badness are added by the user. It is the character of the person behind the tool that defines good and bad. The conditions of our mind will define the quality of our life. A mind of limiting beliefs and destructive perspective will create a life of suffering and hardship for its host. In contrast, a mind of opportunity, potential, optimism, resilience and understandings will create a life of stability, enjoyment and competence. It's true that we are not always responsible for the things that happen to us or around us, but we are responsible for the way in which we process these things, the beliefs we hold, the values we have, and the perceptions through which we view the world around us, ourselves, and other people. Orion's foundation is a collection of principles based on Stoic philosophy and other areas of thought, serves as the groundwork on which to build a stable and resilient personal philosophy that pull us out of limiting and negative beliefs and into more positive and constructive ones. The conditions of our mind will define the quality of our life. Emily, do you remember when One Direction called it a day? I think you'll find there are still many people who can't talk about it. Well, luckily we can a lot because our new season of Terribly Famous is all about the first one, Direction to Go Alone. Zayn Malik will take you on Zayn's journey from Shy Lad 
from Bradford to being in the world's biggest boy band and explore why when he reached the top, he decided to walk away. Follow Terribly Famous Wherever. You get your podcast seems terribly famous. I'm Jason Concy and welcome 6R's podcast hosted by myself and four-time New York Times bestselling author Shea Serrano. Each week, Shea and I are finding the best of the NBA storylines and then handing out six pop culture-themed trophies for six basketball-related activities. Listen to Six Trophies with Jason Kuhn and Chase Serrano on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Daily Stoic Podcast, where each day we read a passage of ancient wisdom designed to help you in your everyday life. On Tuesdays, we take a closer look at these stoic ideas and how we can apply them in our actual lives. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy your mind as a fighter. Marcus Aurelius hated the gladiatorial games. He despised the violence and the pointlessness of it, but it was also his job to attend them, so he did his best to distract himself with a book often to the bemusement of the crowd. When he was emperor, he tried to give the gladiators wooden swords so they wouldn't hurt each other. Seneca found the violence disturbing too, and he was wary of anything the mob loved. Yet both Seneca and Marcus really understood the power of the metaphor, which is why allusions to the games are threaded through their works. They knew that life was a battle. They felt that the philosopher belonged in the arena. They knew that surviving winning depended on training and courage and tenacity. They didn't live long enough to read Boswell. They would have appreciated his description of the mental facilities of his muse and hero. Samuel Johnson what Marcus? Aurelius himself called the command center through the imagery of what Marcus and Seneca saw firsthand. His mind resembled a vast amphitheater. The Colosseum of Rome Boswell said in the center stood his judgment, which like a mighty gladiator combated. Those apprehensions that he, that like the wild beasts of the arena were all around in cells ready to be let out upon him. After a conflict, he drove them back into their dens, but not killing him. They were still assailing him. We don't have to revel in combat sports to understand that we are in our own desperate fight. We are fighting against false impressions. We are fighting against destructive emotions like greed and fear and envy and prejudice. We are fighting against our lower self in order to reach that higher plane, the one worthy of being cheered and celebrated. And it's a fight that happens day in and day out and never really ends, Will. Never win, but we can be great in our brief moment in the arena. We can be mighty as we fight back the beasts that are let out upon us. Marcus Aurelius, concentrate every minute on doing what's in front of you. You don't have to turn this into something. It doesn't have to upset you. The present is all we have to live in or to lose. Stop whatever you are doing for a moment and ask yourself, am I afraid of death because I won't be able to do this anymore? Let each thing you would do, say, or intend be like that of a dying person. The things you think about determine the quality of your mind. Your soul takes on the color of your thoughts. Today, I escaped anxiety, or no. I discarded it because it was within me in my own perceptions, not outside. You have to assemble your life yourself, action by action. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way the best. Revenge is not to be like your enemy. You can also commit injustice by doing nothing. Receive without pride, let go without attachment it. If it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. Have I done something for the common good? Then I share in the benefits. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people but care more about their opinion than our own. It's unfortunate that this has happened. No. It's fortunate that this has happened and I've remained unharmed. If it is not right, do not do it.